Today we're visiting a day-use state park in Texas, Longhorn Cavern State Park. We're here in the beautiful Texas Hill Country near Burnett, Texas, and we're excited to see what all this park has, to, has in store for us. So stick around while we show you around Longhorn Cavern State Park. So this is a park that I have wanted to visit for a very long time. It was built in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps, and it's a super unique, not the only day use only area park in uh, the Texas State Park system, but definitely one of the most unique. Let's go check out Longhorn Cavern State Park. That was really, really cool. Definitely worth the time. And there's a lot more to explore here at this park that we're gonna check out while we're here. This is the entrance into the cave. Yeah. The current entrance into the cave, not the historical entrance, but we no. got to see that from the inside. Yeah, and uh, Stacy got a lot of pictures and, and uh, but also, I wanted to mention one of my biggest takeaways is this is only one of two, one of two cave formations like this in the United States because it was formed by a river. Yeah, an ancient river. They say they think it was formed about 500 million years ago. Yep. Uh, the water quit flowing, they think, about 100 million years ago. Yes, wow. so in the pictures, we don't, there's not a lot of stalactites and really no stalagmites because there was water flowing through here. The other cave systems around the United States, most of them, the other one's in New York, by the way. The other the river, river formed. formed one. But the other caves other than that, you see a lot of stalactites and stalagmites because they're formed by the trickling of the water through the top of the cave and here that wouldn't they wouldn't be able to form because water was flowing through there so they couldn't form until after the cave dried up but how cool i mean it's a very unique cave system i've never seen anything like it and there's a sign right where we're standing over to the side here where it talks they talk a lot about the civilian conservation corps here and rightfully so uh the civilian conservation corps guys loaded out over six years, 3,000 dump loads of debris and rock that had flowed by the river into the cave. And amazing. One, one other thing that was really amazing, back in the days when, you know, for tourism and stuff way back in the days, like the 30s, the uh, Carlsbad Cavern had put in an elevator to go down and they started pulling away a lot of the tourists. So in this cave, they actually put a nightclub. <laughs> and they would, they even fed people down there. They would, they had this big- They uh, had a dolly system. Dolly that they system. They could lower the food and the dishes down and then back up. And uh, yeah, they had a stage down there. They would have a band playing and tables where people could eat and, and dance. dance. And yeah, so how awesome is that? I mean, so this cave, no telling. I, I could just imagine the first person that found this. How crazy would that be? And they say, we went, uh, we went 120 feet underground uh, for the tour 
the cave goes another 10 feet down, about 130 feet. And then you can see a little tunnel in the back of that area. And they say they're reported people have gone as far as two miles back. They may even go eight miles. It may, but but it's they a don't small believe that. little crawling. And it'd be total darkness and wet and, you know. They think the cave system actually runs under what is Lake Buchanan now. So yeah. parts of it would be flooded, most likely. Yeah, and of course, back in the day, Lake Buchanan never existed. That's a man-made lake. But uh, no, this is really cool. If you ever get a chance, I'd say definitely do it. Even if you've done other cave tours, this one's unique. Unless you did the one in New York. Uh, uh, but still, it would be unique. Oh, they're all unique. But I mean, as far as the looks of the cave, it is different from ones that are formed the other ways so, or other ways. Well, we're going to move on and maybe show you a trail or two and some other things. Let's go see what else is out here. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to uh, our tour guide, Margot. She was a wealth of information about the cave and its history and its formation and just super fun. We really enjoyed the tour. There were about 20 people on our tour, 21 actually, and she said that's about a normal size for a tour. They do tours all day, every day, I believe. Yeah, and I wanted to mention one other thing is that if you have a Texas State Parks Pass, you get a discount on this tour. Yeah, and that's something we haven't talked about yet. This state park is actually, it operates a little bit differently than other Texas state parks. There is no entrance fee to come into Longhorn Cavern State Park. You don't need a parks pass to do that. You can just come in, enjoy the hiking trails, have a picnic. If you want to take the cave tour, there is a fee for that and you get a 10% discount on that if you have a Texas State Parks Pass. Yeah. So. Well worth the money. Oh yeah, for sure. One of the things that we are really loving about Longhorn Cavern State Park is that they have preserved so much of the Civilian Conservation Corps architecture here. Behind me here is the original administration building that the Civilian Conservation Corps built while they were building the park in the 1930s. way they constructed this is just outright outstanding. I mean, so many different layers of construction and uh, stone and it looks like there's wood up there. And I mean, it's just crazy. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, I'm in awe. Yes.
the ceiling in here. Look at that. Oh, and there's a loft above me. There sure is. And they actually have, this panel talks about there's a CCC scavenger hunt to help you find all of the CCC objects that still have buildings and things that still exist in the park, knowing what to look for. Very cool. Okay, so now we're gonna take the Backbone Ridge uh, Nature Trail, and this is right directly behind the, the main headquarters here, the main office. Uh, so let's go see what we can find. And Margot's already got another tour that she's beginning to lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yep, this is an interpretive tour uh, trail. So, you know, again, we love these. Tells you about the, the plants in the area and what you're looking at. Always enjoy that. And by the way, they do have some maps uh, in the park office where you get your tickets for the cave tour. And uh, they're a little bit different than most trail maps that you'll see at Texas State Parks, but they do have all of the trails lined out as well as their distances, and none of them are long. The longest trail listed is the Karst Discovery Trail at 0.6 miles. So, yep, we're on the Backbone Ridge Nature Trail. It is a beautiful day. Let's see what it looks like. I mean, the trail is well laid out, but they also have, this is how they mark the trail, with the yellow paint every so often. We notice it on the rocks. I love this sign. So the great thing about a nature trail is that you learn about some of the plant species along the way and animals. This is about lichen, and lichen, you've seen it probably, it is, it almost looks like a fungus growing on the tree. But basically it says, it's slow growing organism that results of a relationship between an algae and a fungi. So they said the right, way to remember the name is, it's as if an algae and a fungus took a lichen to one another. <laughs> <laughs> to make lichen. <laughs> Let's see, which way do we want to go? Check our handy map. Check our handy map. So, uh, I think we ought to stay on the Backbone Ridge Trail and go a little further. What do you think? That's fine. The Comanche Spur takes us back to the road. Okay. Okay. We looked on our map, so we're gonna take the Warbler Walk. It's like a .08 little loop right back to here. So, yeah. Which way do you wanna go? I think we go left. Okay. So we learned why this particular short trail is called the Warbler Walk. It's all about songbirds and warblers. And there's a lot of ash juniper trees here, which they use as nest areas. And also they can strip the bark off to help make their nests. But it's tell their signs are talking about the different warblers and the songs that they make. And they say this spring is a great time to see them, but they said they're hard to catch on film because they like to move quickly. <laughs> We'll see if we can find one. Yep, one more for a
warblers. Oh my gosh, so in the colder months, the warblers spend their time in Mexico and Guatemala and that region. And in March, they arrive here in the hill country to raise their chicks. And then as it gets too hot around July, they start heading south again. Wow, that's a long flight for a little bird. So they ought to be around here right now. They should be here, yeah, this is April. I think I've definitely seen some warblers at our campsite at Inks Lake right up the road. So we just finished the warbler trail, but one thing we learned on the trail is that every golden cheek warbler, they're all born here in Texas. So they're all native Texans, just like Stacy and I. That's pretty cool. <laughs> So now we come to the intersection of the Backbone Ridge Nature Trail, which we've been on since the beginning, and the Karst Discovery Trail. Uh, let's see, they both look like good options, but if we take the Karst Discovery Trail, it will lead us to a CCC cabin. Let's do it. All right. Nice little bench right here. So we just met a local who grew up in the area and uh, she said that this area actually, if you really look around and we have noticed, uh, there are old pieces of cans and bottles, very, very old. And the, uh, the theory is, is when the CCC was working here, that's some of their trash remnants actually and she said there was a couple of places on their property where she lives that they had also these CCC dumps as she called them <laughs> but look people have come down piled up the rocks As you can see, as I've gone through here, it is well marked. They have the yellow marks. Because in this section, I could see where you could get off track. Um, but yeah, well marked. You know exactly where you're going. This is this is really cool. It is. And it's, I mean, it's shady. Yeah. And it's just a beautiful hike. For sure. <laughs> Getting a little more interesting, shall we say, a little more challenging. We're up for it. Just follow the yellow dots. <laughs> So this is a prototype of a CCC tourist cabin that they built back in 1934-35. So it's this prototype. I wonder if they had planned to put more cabins here in the park. I'm gonna have to ask when we get back up to the office. That's very interesting. 
Wow, so this observation tower was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps in 1939. How cool is it that you can still climb all the way up to the top to get a view of this section of the hill country? There's the Buchanan Dam way out in the distance. So Wildflower Flower Way is going to take us back to the entrance, and uh, yeah, this has been a pretty incredible hike. Really saw some very interesting things. Very worth taking the hikes here. Oh my gosh! Do not come here, just see the cave and leave, and don't come here and just spend the day hiking and leave. This is really a day experience to relax, see the trails and the cave, yeah, and all of the CCC history that's here as well. It's, that's, this is phenomenal. That's for sure. Let's finish it up. By the way, we're passing through the park's picnic area. You can bring a picnic. There's a bunch of tables in the shade where you can sit amongst the trees and enjoy your snack or your lunch. We have loved this visit to Longhorn Cavern State Park. If you have not been here, you need to come here. This is a day use only park, but so much fun. Just six miles from Inks Lake State Park, so a very easy day trip. Make sure you're subscribed so you'll be along for more fun. Until next time, y'all, safe travels and happy camping. Bye.